1937, this bright-eyed, bushy-tailed fellow from Germany, inspired by Schottwein's uh, incredible work, uh, got out of school and started building a new electronic musical instrument. And it didn't light, it didn't use like a heterodyning oscillator. It used a harmonic rich, harmonically rich oscillation source and filters. And it had multiple oscillators. It had four oscillators. So it was also controlled by a keyboard, a traditional piano keyboard. So like we've said, the question becomes, hey, how, how was, how, how did this fellow control these four different oscillators with an entire keyboard? I think we should talk about this fellow's name because I'm going to be saying it a lot in this series, but basically this was Harold Boda. Harold Boda is an icon of synthesis history and he's not very well known, which is a crime. And especially because he created so many seminal concepts that we often attribute to other people. And this was the first one of several really important ones. We'll get to more Harold Boda because he plays a role in all of this consistently. But Harold Boda created this device that had four oscillators and was keyboard controlled. If you're a modern person like me, you'll say, well, that's impossible because how would you allocate the voices? How could you create a, uh, a keyboard that could distribute four different notes to four different oscillators? Bob Moog didn't even do that. And when Don Buchla did it, he used a computer. In fact, everybody who did it after that used a computer. There was never a time where you had an allocating keyboard for oscillators. But there was, and it was in 1937 with this device. Harold Boda created a complex routing scheme for voltage that allowed his keyboard to sense the top four notes and direct those four notes specifically to specific oscillators. So basically, if you played four notes, the lowest note would go to one oscillator, the next highest note would go to the next oscillator, and so on. This device also had two filters, and the filters alternated. So the first oscillator went to one filter, second oscillator went to a different filter, third oscillator went to, you know, and so on. So this was a very unique device, and you can imagine that if you then changed your chord into a different chord shape, suddenly the notes in your chord were going to different filters, which was a functionality that Boda found very interesting, that we would find interesting today. It was amazing. Anyway, but the most important point about this device was it had four notes of polyphony, it had a limited oscillator count, and it, di it directed the note iterations to the oscillators without any sort of computer. This device also had envelopes, it had a noise generator, it was, for all intents and purposes, the polyphonic synthesizer that we would make today. In fact, there are other other synthesizers that actually have this structure, four oscillators, two filters, etc. In fact, I'm right next to one, the DSi Pro 2. Anyway, we'll talk about that unique sort of polyphony in a bit, but first, this device was called the, well, I'll say it in German first, and forgive me, I'm sorry. Uh, it was the Var Varbo Formant Orgel, which if we anglicize it, is the Warbo Formant Organ. Unfortunately, the first polyphonic synthesizer that was fully electronic and had no mechanical functionality uh, was called an organ, which is gonna set up organ slash synthesizer confusion for the rest of the story. There's a whole bunch of instances of it. In fact, I'm going to step back to one just before this in 1935 that we'll talk about here in a second. But first, the Warbo was amazing because it really fits all the criteria of a synthesizer that we would have today. And it was four note polyphonic. You could play four different notes at one time. So that was a really unique and interesting architecture. And one has to wonder, well, why didn't that set off you know, the whole synthesizer history right then and there? And the answer is because it was destroyed in a fire. Now, Harold Boda 
thankfully, was not destroyed in a fire and continued to go on to make new instruments. But he did have one sort of challenge with the Warbo, and that was it was very hard to keep those early oscillators in tune. And as anyone who was designing synthesizers in the 70s will know, polyphony is very challenging if you can't keep all your oscillators in tune. So we'll talk about that when we get to the 70s. But right now we're in the 30s. Okay, so this device, the Warbo Formant, Orgel, Organ, Farbo, etc. I mixed them up. I'm sorry. I'm insane. This device was really the seminal moment where an electronic device meant to design timbre that was fully electronic could play multiple notes at a single time. 